Masters, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Are you scared? Go! I've totally lost the plot. I, I, who am I? What am I doing here? My sword is rusty. <laughs> you have an <laughs> imposter syndrome. Uh, I'm Fenton Bailey, uh, back from uh, Asia, and i um, very excited to be presenting the WOW Report, where we, every week, count down the top ten things that make us go WOW! wow. Uh, I'm Fenton, as I think I said, and this is Tom Campbell. Back, back, back again. I feel like I haven't been here for a you long time. You haven't been here either? Okay. Yeah. And James St. James? I've been here. I, I <laughs> yes. haven't left. Carrying uh, on. Yeah. Carrying, carrying on for all of you. Holding down the fort. Yes, holding down the fort. And of course, Blake. Hi. And in addition to being on Radio Andy, we also are on YouTube. And for those of you who need to check it out, because James has pointed out hmm. that Fenton is particularly... Smooth. Well, that's well, what I was just saying. The skin. He's I, very I, don't, I don't think he went to Asia at all. Yeah. I think he, he green screened a bunch of up. pictures mm. yeah. and mm. he went and mm. had a little nip talk. Uh, he's looking fabulous one way or the other. Well, as you know, Bangkok is one of the gender reassignment surgery capitals of the world. Mm -hmm. We weren't suggesting that much work had been done. <laughs> But I, I tell you, medical tourism is huge in Asia, and um, but I feel it just it just good old fashioned relaxation. Ah. That's it. Well, the pictures looked like you were having it a looks great good time. On you. you were surrounded mm. by a, a bevy, a coterie of of handsome oh, well, we'll men every that. time. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait to hear. Well, let's start our countdown uh, where we should normally start with number ten. Number ten. It's true. That's all. Um, <laughs> this is just one of those keep you know mark this in your calendar. It's September sixth. Linda Ronstadt documentary, Still Within the Sound of My Voice. Oh, <gasps> what a title. Yeah. Yes, is coming out. And about time, you know I'm a huge, huge. Linda Ronstadt the fan. Linda Ronstadt fan in the I am. She, she, she was the biggest thing in the 70s. I am a child of the 70s. I love all her music, all of her permutations from rock and roll to country to uh, 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 Pirates of Penzance oh, yeah. to, to I, uh, all standards. I saw, I saw What's her new yeah. to uh, her Mexican, her Mexican yeah. uh, you know, she I, really I, is amazing. Have you seen it? I have not. I've only seen the trailer, okay. but I, I, I'm, I'm going to be talking about the six or seven shows I think in a row. So. I think it premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival, and <clears throat> the word is it's incredibly powerful. Yes, and it's, you know, and she also, the saddest part, and, and, and mm. I feel like Linda has been underestimated because she was sort of pre-videos, music videos. Mm. She was gorgeously beautiful. She still is, but she had gained, you know, she's sort of the sex kitten rock and roll vixen, and, and in many ways, she left that all behind purposely. She's kind of this, un, you know, has forged her own path at every turn like when she did what's new and those albums of big band no one thought they were going to make money she had to pay for it all herself it was her huge sellers they did three of is them she doing okay for herself does she have enough money to live on is she is she doing is she she lives in a big house i don't know i don't have we don't talk that often about her <laughs> money but she you know the, the the obviously the the debilitating thing and the reason that the, the sound of my voice is such a, a poignant title is she no longer can sing she has parkinson's yeah, disease yeah. and her like julie andrews rocked. syndrome in a way, and I also yes. understand she she isn't interviewed for the film. It's the it's all built on the archive of her voice. There's yes. so many interviews and things that's put together. Yes. So she's very present. And in watching the trailer, I'm like, I know every because I just I, I go to YouTube and I type in Dinah Ross today, Linda Ross today, and Olivia Dijon today, just to make sure there isn't an ounce of footage I have not seen. <laughs> but I'm still looking forward to it. It is um, being directed, has been directed by. Rob Epstein and Jeffrey Friedman. Oh my God! They did the uh, Harvey Milk film. Right? Harvey Milk film. They did mm -hmm. Common Threads, uh, stories from the quilt, mm. the celluloid closet. I had no oh, idea. I, love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wildly Oscar winners. accomplished yeah. Oscar winners and 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 contributors to our community. And uh, just from the trailer, you know that Dolly Parton is. Uh, as interviewed and Elmi Lou Harris, they did the trio albums. And there's a quote right. just from Dolly in the thing that makes me shudder. She goes, "When we." heard our voices harmonized for the first time. She goes, it was like the, the biggest rush you've ever had in your life. And they do sp such a beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. Bonnie Raitt is in there and Jackson Brown and David Geffen and, and, and I can't wait to see it. I feel like, I guess everything comes in its time, but it feels like it's just the last moment to talk about Linda, just you know, until everyone starts to yeah. move on. Can I ask a question of probably awful ignorance? Did she do Love as a Battlefield? <laughs> 
That's Pat Benatar. Oh my God! I Darling, do. I have to count could this they, out. No, could they be any further <laughs> apart? She's responsible. The, the, the documentary tells she's responsible for putting the uh, Eagles together because they were her what? backup band. Yeah, what? she she she, they, she was. No. Uh, she hung out at the tour. I didn't door. know that. Her first hit was fifty-one years ago in nineteen sixty-eight. A uh, different drum with the Stone Ponies, and then she hung out at the Troubadour. When the Troubadour was everything, we saw the Troubadour featured in the Elton John movie. And she was going on the road. She had like a great voice, and people. She had to put a band together, and she put Glenn Fry and Don Henley, and they went in her band. She goes, "You don't have to be my band. Just you know, come with me." And they shared a room, and they wrote songs, and they imagined being the Eagles. Oh. Oh my, that is, <laughs> and that whole country, like the, the Jackson Brown, Eagles, Linda Ross, that, that con- California country rock that was so prevalent in the 70s. Sort and of then, AM gold. Yes, and she left all that behind, and you know, her, her, um, her Mexican uh, Canciones de Mi Padre album is, the, I think, the highest selling Spanish-speaking album in America of all time. <laughs> it's like, so she's just defied along the way. The, 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 um, uh, so it's coming out September 6th. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. I know I'm just hyping it, but I want it to be everyone. I think CNN bought it, so maybe it's going to come to television. But I've heard it's amazing. You're right. It is CNN. Yes. Okay. I've heard it's absolutely amazing. And, 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 and Hollywood Reporter says, we'll make you love, fall in love all over again. And Variety says it captures the life and career of a rock and roll star who never looked back, never apologized, never compromised. And I think it says a lot, too, um, about women and rock and roll. And she has a story to tell there because she was the first sort of dominant female rocker who didn't. OD like the lovely uh, right yes and last but not least because we'll be talking about this too she's going to be honored with a Kennedy Center's award this year so it's Linda Ronstadt's year one way or the other oh god that's fantastic Thank James you. number nine number nine. Oh my lord hang on to your hats everyone <laughs> uh, once upon a time in Hollywood I went to go see it I was really excited to see it um, I, Tom you saw it as well I did there's a lot to unpack there it's um, with, without it's g- giving spoilers nope. because you can't give away the spoilers it's re- there's really uh, uh, something to, uh, I have not seen it okay but I do understand it's very hard to talk about without, without giving it away is, the it's ending it's extremely hard right? to talk about we're going to do but, it but I think we can do it I think okay. we can do it I mean <laughs> basically um, you know it's Leo and Brad and uh, the Leo plays an over the hill actor who is um, struggling to stay relevant in the 60s. He was a big st- TV star in the 50s. Yes. Uh, Brad is his uh, best friend and uh, uh, stuntman. Yeah, stuntman who doesn't get a lot of work. And uh, the movie, the first half of it, I thought. I, um, it's a love letter to California in the 60s. And yeah. it, un- it unspools very slowly, sort of. It's it two meanders. hours and 41 minutes, yeah. so you know there's going to be no driving plot. Yeah. It, it but there's meanders. a lot of driving. Yeah, there's, it, a lot of driving. Yeah, there's a lot of driving. And <laughs> they drive along Hollywood Boulevard <laughs> right? up and down. Yes. You see the World of Wonder yes. Building. Twice. The World of Wonder Building, yep. <clears throat> is there. Um, uh, everyone is there. Everyone in the 60s is there. There's a great scene at the Playboy Mansion where it's sort of in his heyday and Ma- Mama Cass is there and Sharon Tate and Roma Polanski yes. are dancing and there's a great scene where Steve McQueen is talking to Connie Stevens yes. and he's he's telling, sort of explaining the relationship between uh, uh, Sharon Tate and um, Roma Polanski and J.C. bringing the hairdresser yes. as they're all dancing and everything like that. That's really fantastic. Um, uh I went in fighting it, like I said. Um, the uh, it's very Tarantino, and it's, it's sort of masturbatory Wildly, yes. in the beginning, but then the last half of it really pulls it together and really changes it up, and really uh, um, it starts. I think I think it really comes together. There's a scene at the Spawn Ranch, yep. okay, where all the Manson kids are living, and Brad Pitt goes. He picks up a girl on the street, and she's one of the Manson girls, and she takes him to Spawn Ranch, and he's like, "Spawn Ranch, I love Spawn Ranch. I used to do a show there. They used to shoot westerns there. They used to shoot westerns there. And so he goes to say hello to George Spawn, who is still alive in the, the back, of, and he's letting all the. But you don't know for a long no, time. Yeah, yeah. It's very yeah, is craftily yeah. staged. So you and, wonder what he's going to find when he finally meets him. Right, and the the, the kids are all. They're feral kids. They they aren't evil. They're menacing, but the they're menacing feral kids, hippies. They're feral hippies. Uh, <coughs> that's really and good. And they're all interestingly played by children of the rich and famous in real life. Yeah. It's Dakota Johnson. It's um uh, um uh, 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 Hawk Maya Hawk Maya Hawk uh, Ethan Hawk. Willis Lena Dunham. They're all these. They're the, and I think that's Quentin Tarantino winking about how awful the kids <laughs> of the rich and famous are. I think he's sort of like winking at us by doing that. Um. <coughs> Austin Butler, 
who is going to play Elvis, who has been around forever and ever. He's Vanessa Hudgens' boyfriend. He, he was in, is he Tex? He was in Zoe, two, Zoe, two, 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 Zoe 101. Zoe 101. He, he was in a bunch of Hannah Montana. Show. Hannah Montana. Did he play Tex? He's playing Tex. Oh, because Tex was sexy. Fan, sexy and fantastic. Not that I want to lust after the away evil. With a whole movie. He walks. I think he's better than Brad and, and Leo. Oh. I do. I think. I think. I think it's Austin Butler's movie to 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 win at the Oscars. I, I do think Brad is going to get nominated. I think Brad had the better part. Brad did an amazing. It's an amazing movie for both of those men. Yeah. I also think it reminds me anyway of Leo DiCaprio is an amazing actor because yeah. there it's it's drama. It's dramatic. It's sarcastic. I mean, it's it's and it has comedy and he plays all of those. There, there's they one particular do. scene with a little girl yeah. where he's acting, and at the very end he breaks into tears. And they said that that was spontaneous, that that wasn't in the script, that that was just Leo it being in the moment. And I will just say, oh, yeah, but, we should talk about this for the entire show. Yeah. But it's it's there's you know the the scene where Brad Pitt goes to the Spawn Ranch, I think is inspired by Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys, who was drawn oh. into the Manson uh, clan way back when because he picked up a hitchhiker and brought, dropped her off. Right. I do want to also say that the, um, the George Spawn is played by Bruce Dern, and it was supposed to be Burt, Burt Reynolds, Reynolds, but Burt Reynolds passed away beforehand. I, it, and the it, and the key relationship between Leo DiCaprio, the movie star, and Brad Pitt, his kind of of sidekick assistant uh, stuntman yeah, yeah. is supposed to be based on Burt Reynolds and Hal Needleman, Needle, Needle, oh, who was okay. his his it, uh, his stuntman. It feels yeah. almost documentary. Is that like well, it's, it's, it's the amalgam of all of uh, Tarantino's knowledge of Hollywood. Yeah, I, I do right. want to say kind of afterwards quilted together. It, he gives you a gift at the end of the movie. And I, on the way home, I burst into tears in the oh car God. riding home. It really affected me a lot. And the whole, what he's trying to say without giving away anything is that he's, during the whole movie, he's asking, what if the promise of the 60s was fulfilled? What if we were able to, what if, what if the 60s didn't have, what if it didn't end at right. the Manson murders and everything that happened after the Manson murders? Because the mythology is that the Manson murders was the end of the 60s. Th yeah, and that, so, that's, and that, that's what he's saying. In the, what if the, the whole 60s, the, the utopia that was promised in the 60s, what yeah. if it would just came to pass? And we, if you're watching, we are sitting with our backs to uh, Moose Moose and Frank, Frank's which the movie starts off in. Look for a little green building next to the supply sergeant sign. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's and all the one. Well, yeah, they were. They used the uh, base camp. They were here yeah. in the gallery. And all the uh, little car. The but car I, you know, I, I chewed on it. He gave it to you a thread. And if you just keep extrapolating, if you just keep pulling that thread, it really is affecting it. Really, it, it, I thought about it all week long. I bought my tickets to see it at the Cinerama Dome a week ahead, and it was it was it was uh, almost oh, yeah. sold out. Well, it was, it was I an think event. it did forty million. I mean, yes. we know the Lion King bested it because the Lion King no, is on its yeah. way to taking a billion dollars yeah. at the box office, but it, it's it done really well. Kind of exciting. Then, There's a lot of criticism about female roles. We'll talk about it. Okay. Well, we'll definitely talk about it more because I haven't seen it. Oh, yet. good. Please do watch it. We'll, we, yeah. we'll well, talk about I, it for I feel months. like I'm sort of steering the conversation away because at number eight. Number eight. I'm just going to talk about Crazy Rich Asians again, which we haven't talked about for a while. So I went on vacation. Yes. To, well, here's how the vacation started. Nolan, we're like, what do you want to do this summer? And Nolan was like, let's go to Singapore because his favorite film is Crazy Rich Asians. Huh. And he really wanted to stay in. You've seen the <coughs> film, right? I haven't. The end of the film. The film ends in this amazing hotel called oh, the Marina the, the Bay one, Sands the, Hotel. I know the one you're which talking is about. three giant towers with an enormous boat on top of it. I mean, it really is a spectacular building in the film. But like to see it in the flesh, it's unbelievable. It's sort of like a Vegas casino, but just the scale of it. The, it the is pool, so there's a pool on the top that's huge, right? Fast. It is the longest highest pool in the world. Yeah, yeah. I think it's something like 500 feet long. And you stayed there. <laughs> and we stayed there, yes. because I, I wish you were my parents. I couldn't even get a moped out of my parents. I know. I, I wanted said, a moped. I said to Nolan, can we just stay at the hotel across the way and look at it? <laughs> He's like, no. So, but I, and, and it is, you know, there's no question, let's not pretend, it's tourist central and it's the Marina Bay Sands, so it's the Sands Corporation who own lots of casinos. But there's something about this place that is really quite extraordinary. And then you realize there's something about Singapore that is completely extraordinary because it's an old British colony that was then given back and they went for a while, they were part of Malaysia. And then, blow me down, Malaysia kicked them out. And they completely, it's a tiny, tiny country, mm -hmm. but they come to Singapore, but they completely reinvented themselves as this financial powerhouse. And 
You know, Did, you know we have the, Donald Trump talking about shithole countries. I tell you, you go to Asia, you realize the United States is the shithole country. It's shocking the amount of money, the development. I don't know where the money's coming from, whether it's China or finance or... You, you, you come back to LAX and you think, what happened? Now, maybe you know? I sound dumb, but I thought Singapore was in China. Singapore no, is its Singapore's own country? In, uh, Singapore's part of a sort of Malaysia. There's Malaysia, which is one which is sort of on the peninsula, right. and carved out of it is Singapore. There's a lot of little, little uh, sort of uh, nation entities out there. Now, it's but quite the, unusual. the wharf in Singapore, yeah. isn't it famous? Because it's still there's still a lot of like it, you could going back in time, and it still hasn't changed. It wasn't much going back in time. It felt like being fast forwarded in, into the into the future. Oh. So the first thing we do, we get there and we huh. go and stay. And um, we, we got hideous jet lag and everything. But the first thing we did the next day is we went on the Real Crazy Rich Asians tour, which is this <laughs> sweet kid, uh, Philip Chu. He's adorable. He's like 28 years old. <coughs> and he started, he read the book, Crazy Rich Asians, yeah. by... <coughs> do you remember the name of the author, James? I'm blanking on his name. Oh, I've got to get it right. Like a look it up. Kevin Kwan. Yes. Kevin Kwan. So he read the book in like 2014 and he started doing a tour. This is long before there was even, ah. even a movie. And um, at first it was just, he said like, oh, it's just a lot of old white men from America <laughs> would go on this tour. But it's become for him this incredibly successful business. And basically we go to all the locations where the movie was fam- filmed because that movie had such a huge impact. Like I think tourism, jumped by 20% within like a couple of months of the movie being released. And obviously the Marina Bay Sands Hotel is one location which he didn't have to take us to because we were staying there. But then out back, there are these amazing gardens, gardens by the bay. There's, have you seen the film, James? No. Oh my goodness, you guys, you both have to see the film. But you're turning us on to the, to the op- it, it is op- on Netflix now. You really okay, do good. have to see the film. It is, have you seen the film, Blake? I haven't. Oh my <laughs> goodness me. I, <laughs> <laughs> Nolan, to- call Nolan. <laughs> Nolan on the phone. Oh, it's such a fun movie. It's so moving. It's a sweet love story. It makes me cry. He says it was time. full of tourists. I, yes. When I go to New York anytime, mm-hmm. I always feel like when I go in any of the tourist places, I, I don't hear anybody speaking English. Were people, was it mostly Americans? Or what, kind, what was the composition by your ear of the tourism? I would say the tourism. I mean, one of the things about Singapore is unlike a lot of other Asian countries, like, for example, China or, or uh, Thailand or even Cambodia, everyone speaks English. It's like Hong and Kong. And the signs are all in English. It's like Hong Kong, which was where we went, which was our next stop. But Wait, so I, I, I'm really stupid here. Yes, yes, but yes. Singapore is the country. What's the, what's the, what's the city? Singapore is the city, and the, it's also the country. Oh, it's a, na- okay. it's a, it's like a nation Rome. city. Monte no, Carlo. Like the the Monte Carlo. No, but oh, Monte Carlo is Monaco. So it's not like that at all. <clears throat> well, I it, know nothing of what I speak. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I even loud on the air? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it makes... I, I can't... I, I mean... I, I just think if you've seen the movie or if you've read the book, <laughs> which none of you have, you'll want to go on this tour because it takes you to all the locations. And, Dora. and <coughs> there really is some crazy shit. Like there is, uh, for example, there's a, a, a tower block that has a, a garage elevator. So you drive your car in and your car gets taken up to the elevator. There is a hotel for your dog called the Waggington Hotel. Um, <laughs> there is the, the Go family, which is one of the families that were very crazy rich and one of the most nouveau families. We drove past their house and it's this amazing compound. It looks like an, an embassy and there's a giant 50 foot high statue of an eagle and there are like Maseratis parked outside. And the thing about, one of the things about Singapore is they don't want traffic. So if you buy a car, it costs an arm and a leg and then to have a license to drive it on the road costs even more. So the guy just has a Maserati parked on the forecourt that he never takes on the road. It's just there for Status. decoration. It's so like he, a lawn oh, jockey. It's so much. The, the, <laughs> the, the, so. Pink flamingo. La- last mm, question, mm, answer yes or no. Mm. Did you look at real estate while you were there? Absolutely. No, I can't <laughs> afford it. It's insanely expensive. I mean, I, it is. Sounds like Fenton's I mean, <laughs> No, no, no oh, what no, do you no. want for your birthday? I want some real estate. Yes, daddy. Daddy, daddy. daddy. Get some real estate in Singapore. <laughs> the last thing I will mention about Singapore is that, uh, so the Marina Bay Sands Hotel is 
as many hotels in Asia are, attached to a massive, giant mall of Gucci, Chanel, Louis Vuitton. And the Louis Vuitton thing bests all the other Louis Vuitton and all the other brands because the, it's an actual island store. The, the store itself is in the middle of a lake, standalone wow. store. It is the largest uh, Louis Vuitton boutique outside of Paris. I mean, it's just, it is jaw-dropping, insane and I, I mean it isn't I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not passing a moral judgment here or maybe people are passing a moral judgment saying what the fuck this is just sort of is it materialism sustainable, I guess is what I'm thinking I, it seems to have been sustaining and, and then you, you you realize just how technologically architecturally it's just as we're talking to our big microphones in the window at World of Wonder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the 1950s. Oh, 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 oh. We have to take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue with the countdown here on the Wow Report. Hey Blake, have you got a question for us? I do. Um, studies show that men are more likely to do this during the summer months. Oh wow! Well. Oh. We could go into some. It could get really dark and dirty <laughs> here. Yeah, listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy. We'll be right back after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom Hello. and uh, James, St. James. Hello, darling. Hello, and Blake, of course. So, what was the question for the break? I said, or I asked, studies show that men are more likely to do this during the summer months. What is it? Shave their legs. Masturbate. Masturbate. Cheat. Oh! Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> we are counting down top 10 things that made us go, wow. wow. We have reached number seven. <laughs> <laughs> number seven. I have been working very hard. We all have. I feel like my um, connection to pop culture is not as as rich and plentiful as it usually is. And I am not binging things and on and on and on. And yet, and yet, I am five episodes deep into the loudest voice in the room. Oh my God, isn't it amazing? What is it? It's the Showtime uh, <sighs> miniseries yeah. starring Russell Crowe, who's portraying Roger Ailes oh. from that biography, The Loudest Voice in the Room. But wait, I was going to say, because you've, you've seen the, the, bio, or the documentary. There's a documentary. Yes, about him, and this yeah. is a, a TV <clears throat> version of the documentary? Yes. Okay. Scripted drama. Scripted and they, drama. It, it starts with him being fired from CNBC and going to uh, start Fox, which he was just like, he fought very hard to say like, no existing news channels, no existing, you know, not non-compete. And so Fox didn't exist, but he knew it was gonna happen and how he took over Fox, how he's ruthless, how he is a um, uh, hemophiliac. Oh, yes. And, and bleeds all the time, which is just a nice little texture when you're like, you don't like him and then he starts, you know, scratching himself and he's bl clotted blood everywhere. It's him having sex with people. It's we just got to the Gretchen Carlson beat in episode five. I think there's seven or eight altogether. It is well, dark and dreary, is. and you've seen it. What do you think? No, I mean I've only seen two episodes. I thought it was amazing the way they decided to take seminal turning point incidents. Like one hour is yeah. the but the firing from. NBC CNBC. when it became MSNBC, yep, right? Yep. And then inventing Fox News. And then the next one is the o Obama election, uh, election of Obama, right? He, yes. Right? Yes. No, um, the thing is, though, I'm not a huge Russell Crowe fan. I don't, I, he's, he's so Is he good. fantastic? Is he Emmy bound? Is the question. Very likely. <laughs> there, you know, I was reading some of the reviews, and people are not Negative. as kind. Yeah. Uh, and really? he's wearing a lot of, pre he's definitely heavy, but he's wearing some prosthetics Well, I've seen the pictures too. and he looks fantastic. Yeah. There's a scene, this is disgusting to talk about, but there's a scene where he's making one of the blonde girls who you, I can't tell apart. Like <coughs> Sienna Miller is in yeah. this. It's like, but it makes sense because I can't tell the blonde woman apart well, on they're Fox. All, they're either. all interchangeable on yes. Fox. Yeah, they really but are. One, this one girl who's sort of forced into a sexual relationship with him is like giving, you, you, you don't know what's going on. You slip around and she's on her knees and he's this like huge Big, like it's just the the most unappealing mm. profile you can imagine. Imagine, and and uh, you know he won't let her uh, stop until she she finds someone else for him to sleep with, and 
it, it's just it's dark. And someone, one of the reviews said, and I thought it was really wrong. They were saying that um, they didn't capture any of the magic of Fox, any of the ha, what Fox. makes it, what makes it so. Because I remember when Fox first started, it was compelling because it, because it's like cheap talk radio. You know, yeah. they sucked you in with opinion. But like, there's nothing aesthetically or intellectually stimulating about Fox. It's just a hate machine, mm -hmm. and this is the man who created it. Mm -hmm. And as much as we complain about Trump and everybody else, Fox, I don't know, Fox feels like the, the cornerstone of the demise of democracy right now. Now, but wait, now, but, um, <laughs> well, Roger Ailes is dead, right? Yes. Thank yes. God, yes. But um, what, what are the Ailes family, what, is, what are they saying about this? Is it be, are they being sued? Is They're it, like, what? eh, it's true. No, his, <laughs> his wife is being portrayed too. I, it's... I have not heard anything about them, but it is it is dark. It is, I'm assuming, very accurate. It would have to be legally. Yeah. Um, what are you going to say? Well, no. I mean, I think he, in some respects he was a genius of media, but the most awful, evil man. And if you watch the documentary, you just you uh, end up being a sort of a bag bundle of rage because he is so awful. And yeah. in fact, you feel nothing but glee for the fact that after he was fired because his sexual uh, assault, yeah. rape, yeah. harassment did catch up with him. And re reluctantly, I guess, the Murdoch family finally had to fire him. He died shortly after he was fired, collapsed in his home. You feel no, you just feel just thank. God, that fucker is dead. And one of the reviews I mean, was sort of like, well, what are the, what's the, re it, this thing fails to illuminate why he was the way he was. And it's like, I'm sorry. Mm. It, it's, this is who he was. Exactly. It, and, and it's not like, oh, I hit my head when I was a kid. And therefore, I, the, every time I see a bucket, I do mean things. Right. It's like, I don't like that pat answer. This is like, <laughs> you know, but you know, like a lot of biopics feel compelled to tell you the one thing that happened in the Find childhood. Find the reason. I mean, I suppose the fact that he is hemophiliac, people have said it, they, it explains his hatred of women because he, supposedly got it from his mother's side of the family so he always despised his mother so he took it all out on women but but regardless this was a man who had an idea who saw an opportunity and who ruthlessly maximized and divided it. our nation and yes i mean did irreparable harm yep. in the process so for a good time <laughs> watch the loudest i tell you room. it's a bit like it reminds me uh, of succession which is on hbo which and I still need to the see. second series is coming back yep. in a in a week or so and because that, that is also about the murdoch family and so they're in they're on tv quite a lot at the moment all right, so number seven, James. Six. Is it seven? Six. No, James. I was so six. close. Almost. It's so close. No. Do it again. James. Yeah? What have you got for us? Number six. Number six. I watched something for you, Fenton. <laughs> I watched a New Zealand reality show called The Casketeers. Casketeers. The Casketeers. <laughs> and it's about a, a funeral home in uh, New Zealand. It's not what it, you think. Yeah, it it's in, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a mausoleum, uh, um, it's a mortuary, a funeral home in, in, uh, in, and it's run by these two lovely people uh, named Francis and his wife, Kaor Tapine, I think is their, their names. And, um, it's the day-to-day -day runnings of a, of a funeral home, which is something that you've always wanted to do a show yeah. about. You've always wanted to do a reality show. You had me write a scripted version once. I did not do very well. This was back in the 90s. Huh. Um, but it's something that you've always been fascinated with. And I'm here to tell you that it's not that fascinating. <laughs> oh. it, it really is, you know, the day-to-day -day running of a Muslim. It's boring like any other job. The thing that saves it is the, the, the people who run it. You love them. It's, like with any reality show, it's the people that you sure. get to, to do it. And um, it's run by, like I said, Francis, and you instantly fall in love with Francis. He is um, uh, in front of one of the indigenous people of New Zealand, the, the Maoris. Maoris. Uh, yes, and so not only do you get um, the, the, the his customer base is all Maori, and um, so there's a lot of interesting things. You know, the day to day, the day to day of living with death and the day to day of funeral customs and things like that is all fascinating. But the Maori people who come to him, they have a different um, customs, and there's a lot of. Um, like tribal dancing and uh, there's like a rhythmic chanting cool. and they do these stomping dances and everything at the funerals. So that's that's all very fascinating. Um, uh, 
It, I, I just, I, it's, it's interesting to watch. I, I did you watch the whole thing? I watched um, five episodes. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> I would, it, you were so committed. I you know, but, but I did. I, but it is, it's fascinating. And I do think that everyone should. If you, it, I didn't love it. I watched five episodes. <laughs> it's true. But I do, like I said, you love everybody you involved. In. And every episode, there's a little something different about you know, like you're you're, you're embalming in one episode. You're you're doing the well, makeup. That's, I I you, love the yeah. embalming and the and the like, the, like in the loved yeah. one. You know when they they have to suck all the fluids out and yeah. and, and, and uh, we did shoot a teaser a, a piece and um, I loved the embalmer and she had this wand that, that you she pokes around sort of like a vacuum cleaner and then they put a little cork in the yeah, butt yeah. To, to stop leakage yeah. isn't that great that but you, there, there is no way to stop leakage eventually because it, like when you when you um, you're telling me it, I mean, it, they, do, they have a little hose <laughs> that, that leaks that, that leaks everything out everything again you're telling me <laughs> um, I just want to say if you do have if you're, if you're a colorful character mm -hmm. and you have a run a funeral home contact us here at World of Wonder yeah, yeah. Yeah. World then, of know, Wonder the whole, right? make it, the whole makeup and, and, and you know yeah. reconstruction of everything is fascinating because I have a title for the show but working stiff I love, it. I love it. I love it. Give us the show. We got the title. <laughs> and just That's what you the need. selling of the coffins is interesting too, because yes. you have the, the very high end ones, and then the pine box. It's just it's fascinating, and like people want like customized coffins. I think it's a healthy thing too, because you know we we flee from death. We sort of yeah. tabooize it. We are ashamed of it, and, and I you think see, you it's see just a part of with living. Them. Sure. Yeah. Right. The, the people who work there have such a different relationship with death than yeah. the rest of us right. do. It's just another chance to spend money <laughs> well, exactly all right so moving on number five number five uh so after singapore we went to hong kong nice and i know none of you have seen the movie <laughs> i have been to hong Asians. kong right well because the second you know the crazy rich Asians is part of a trilogy and the second book is called crazy rich girlfriend and is set in hong kong so I was so inspired by the tour that we did and Philip Chu that I got the book and I read the book and it's amazing. I mean, James, you've really, you really got to read it. Sure. But Hong Kong is next level shit. It's, it's like Singapore. It's all these skyscrapers and all these bankers. You know, at the moment, of course, there are these very contentious demonstrations going on. Oh, yeah. Protests. I was going to say, were and you there when it was avoid, happening? Yes, yes. And did you, were you in the streets as it no, happened? Oh. No, no. We went, we went on the subway. And the, and the funny thing is, when they protest, I mean, the, the protests happen and all that, but the, uh, they put post-it notes up uh, all over the subway. So that's always just covered in post-it notes, which are in... Cantonese or Mandarin, so I couldn't read what they are. Wait, but well, who does that and why? The protesters. They they write post-it notes and what do they put? What, what are they saying? I don't know. I don't speak Cantonese or Mandarin, but it's basically the essence is Hong Kong, and this is another interesting sort of. The British gave Hong Kong back to China. Yes, and the uh, China promised that it would be one country, China, but with two governments. Hong Kong would maintain its own mm -hmm. government. Right. And the protests are happening because the people of Hong Kong feel that China isn't respecting that and is gradually undermining the independence of the, of the government. It's really serious. I mean, millions of people take to the streets. I mean, I'm but ashamed you, to say we were angry. in the four seasons and didn't see them, you know. Right. But it, it makes you angry because why are mm. we not taking to the streets? Why do we not? Why are we not doing? Why are we as angry as, as the people in Hong Kong and the people in, in Puerto other Rico. Yeah, and the people in Puerto Rico. Job. Why are we not doing that? <clears throat> I'm mad at us. I'm mad at well, us about that. We could that. just leave here right now and go to Washington. I mean, I do think sooner or later someone is going to start a, a grassroots but are they? Are we, are we just filled with too much lethargy? Aren't are we? Just, a little we, bit, I think. Yeah. My sister Amy keeps saying, we, "Why don't we like? Why doesn't every city take a day of the week? Like yes. Monday, Boston, yes. mm -hmm. Tuesday, New York? You know, just like and why just are we not in storming the, the gates? Why do we not have their heads on pikes? That why isn't the, why isn't the revolution happened yet? You should start that. Well, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it, busy, busy watching I, I, the Cascadeers. It is nailed. extraordinary. <laughs> it is extraordinary also because it does seem like in Congress the Democrats aren't sort of doing very much. No, they aren't doing shit. <laughs> Fucking Nancy Pelosi, don't get me started. We gave you a we gave you a mandate. Congress, work, do it. They're afraid. 
I know what they're afraid of, but it's not. It doesn't matter. We're going to lose all those congressional seats right. in swing states. And that, that, that if, by, we, if, it, if the optics are such that, that, that we're when, just wasting when, when, time. When they, gave, you know what, when they gave Clinton, when they impeached him, his numbers went up, and they're afraid they're going to. But you know what's interesting? Thing. I have to say, having been in China, I mean, in Asia for two weeks, <clears throat> you suddenly realize, oh my God, America with. However many years of pointless wars, however many trillions of dollars squandered, has really gone down. Just take it's 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 disappearing up its own ass, really, of 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 crazy, wasted, missed opportunities, well, and, and 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 never more so than now. I mean, mm. I, I what Trump is doing is sort of looks like hideous demolition job and destruction. It, it is. I yeah. mean, it's but taking it, the country it, apart, but it's. It's extraordinary to be in other countries that are extraordinarily functional, even if there is incredible dissent on the streets, but right. that are really Progressive, going into the future. Yes. yes. I guess I mean, the, the big question that I have for you, though, is that mm. um, you learned to make wontons or, or pot stickers or something. How did Wait, that go? Took a, 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 um, That's number one. <laughs> it took a dumpling class. A dumpling class. Yeah, because cool. in, again, in Crazy Rich Asians, is a great dumpling making scene. Well, but who doesn't make dumplings? Uh, who doesn't well, love you know dumplings? What? We went to the market. We bought the <coughs> pork and we bought the, the the round things. And it's it took me a while, but it's actually not. That's I, genius. I'm going to invite you over and make dumplings. Well, I was going to say, it was amazing. But I, we no, went I tonight. No, but I want no <laughs> one to. I asked no one to come in and cater and we, make some dumplings for we us. We bring it How about tonight? It was crazy. F Felicity, she was amazing. She took us to the market, and then she took us to her apartment, where she lives with her husband and her father and their baby and their sister. And the apartment is the size of the studio. I kid you not. It is wow. tiny. But we sat there at the kitchen table and made dumplings. It was absolutely amazing. Like I'm being ignored. When are we invited over for dumplings? No, it feels like an empty promise. We're definitely going to make dumplings. Right. Okay. Well, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with the wow report. But we have a question, Blake. Mm -hmm. Summer penile syndrome oh, yeah. uh -huh. is a seasonal like... skin disease characterized by an acute penis hypersensitivity, swelling, itching, and painful urination. What? The disease is caused by what? Most often during the summer, warm summer months. These are all men's junk summer <laughs> questions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, listening to the World Report on radio, Andy will be right back with the answer. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report. Uh, I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and Blake. And just for the break, Blake, you had the most bizarre question mm -hmm. it's called summer <laughs> penile syndrome sure. and it's a seasonal skin disease it's characterized by an acute penis hypersensitivity swelling itching and painful urination it's caused by what most well, often during I, the warm summer months well it must be just sweat right I was gonna say swamp sweaty, balls. Swamp, 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 sweaty balls sweaty balls <laughs> yeast it's actually caused by chigger bites oh what, what, is, what did you what, just call what, me <laughs> What are they? What are they? Chiggers. What, what are chiggers? They're like these little bugs. They always had them in the South, I know. Like, really? I never You've got You've had chiggers? Them. No. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all had chiggers, for God's <laughs> sakes. But, you know, I thought there, there is something that says... For, um, Can you see them? I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, summer penis, though, is something else altogether. And I'm going to say, tell you what summer penis is after the... This one goes There's back. a siren going by, Very for much. those of you... Who can't hear it because it's so far away from the microphone? Uh, I thought you were going to ask about summer penis, which is the fact that um, <laughs> <laughs> they're coming to take you away, James. I thought you were talking about summer penis, which is something that men's um, penises are bigger in the summer than they are in the winter. In the winter, there's shrinkage, <laughs> and in the summer, but your, that your, makes your sense, penis James. Gets well, thank you for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> you're, so you're, 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 it's the cold air that makes it shrink. And yeah, warm and the warm, warm air makes it expand. Engorged. And, yeah, and <laughs> this is uh, you're listening to Radio Andy, not the Science Channel, <laughs> even though we're getting very sciencey. Yeah, chiggers and big penises. Very science All right. Well, uh, let's carry on with the countdown. We've reached number four. Number four. Mason Ramsey. Do you know who that is? Gordon Ramsey. Do you know who Mason Ramsey is? Oh my gosh. Do you know who Mason Ramsey is? I do. He was famous a year ago. He was the yodeling kid at Walmart. I love him. Yeah, huge, huge, huge. Now, that's one of those things that I see 
that I don't click on. I think I can move beyond it. It doesn't matter. It's good. He is the next Taylor Swift. Did you, wait, <laughs> did you see when he floated over the crowd? Have you seen that video? Where no. He's, 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 um, like Coachella he's, or Coachella. something? Coachella, yeah. He's, he's performing, and he, go, he, he he's goes surfing through the crowd, and it's really beautiful. You'll cry. This is. I will look at that. I Because I, I, this weekend... Uh, in uh, the Grand Ole Opry, uh, M- Miley and uh, Billy Ray Cyrus sang with him. I think they duetted with him on Old Old Town Road. Old Town Road. Who Lil Nas X not there. Point. What's that? Lil Nas X. I think Little Nas. I think he did the Little Nas part. Okay. But um, I was like, who is he? I looked him up. I figured out who he was. I- I'm just this is just a segment to talk about how embarrassingly behind in pop culture I am. But he's like 13. He has this. It, uh, it's, I don't think it is auto tune, but it sounds like an auto tune voice. Like he's very, mm-hmm. very whatever. And he, I guess he had a big hit with "Famous," a song that the Florida, Georgia, Georgia, Florida state line, Florida, Georgia line, line wrote for him. And he has a new song just out recently called "Twang." That she loves my twang. And um, oh, see, I didn't know he was like a hit maker now. Oh, I thought the, he, he just saw, had, yes, yes. Is this consequently because, because he went viral or did he go, yes. did, had he already yes. been, he'd already, no, viral and, and I think his grandparents raised him and, and just I, as cute as a bug's ear. And I've also, adorable. And, and Old Town Road, which I have, I know about, but I have not, is like surpassing Despacito it, it, as yeah. the right. most. Bigger than the Mar- Mariah Mar- Mar- Carey to um, oh, Boys to Men. Oh, Macarena, everything. No, right. Out the window. Bigger than Boys to Men and Mariah Carey. Bigger than Boys to Men. Yeah, the number one hit song of all time uh yeah well it's been 16 weeks at number one and that's nos no it's 17 weeks this week little nos who's come out did you amazing. see soul town have you heard soul town road that was where he did it with bts little nos x and bts no. okay you don't you don't know we what you're talking about homework to do We're running late short in time so um, um wow mason ramsey all right check him out number three james number three this is long. That's I don't amazing. know how you're going to do it I, because I'm going long. I'm just, I'm going to talk for go an long. hour here. I I'm love gonna it. Go. I'm going. Every word. Why don't you I make it. it short? I can't. I can't. I can't. You're gonna have to well, come why out. don't you go ahead and We're start? We're here for your pleasure. Do yeah. it. Yeah. Tallulah Banquet. <laughs> That's great. All right. <laughs> no, this is for you. This is for you. Oh. For you. You've got to listen oh. to me. Okay, <laughs> to Lula Bankhead, one of the great stage actresses of the 20th century. Yes. Fabulous, fabulous. She, uh, they called her the Velvet Foghorn because she talked like this, darling. Yes, she, had, darling. she had this voice and everything was, darling, darling, it's too fabulous, darling, darling, darling. She was um, a great witch. She, was, um, she smoked, she drank, she was a bisexual. Yes. She, was a, she, was, she slept with everybody and everything. She did drugs. She famously said, um, uh, uh, I don't like cocaine, I just like the way it smells. <laughs> And then she said, um, "She said I'm not a cocaine addict, darling. I should know. I've been doing it for years." That's was funny. her big was her big thing. Um, she was in the 1920s. She was from a great family in New Orleans, and they sent her to New York to, when she was a teenager. She lived at the Algonquin in the 1920s, hung out with Dorothy Parker, Robert Benchley. She was very famous for going to parties, and she would be in fabulous frocks, fabulous outfits, and she would just take all her clothes off and she'd just be naked at the party. And she'd be like, "What are you looking at, darling? What are you looking at?" And she, um, she sounds very- like um, Amanda Lepore. Not even close. Well, <laughs> she gets naked oh, at parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the naked okay. part. The, the naked part, yes. Um, <laughs> but not the way she talks. Not, not her great witticisms. Um, but anyway, um, so she she went to the West End, and that's where she became famous, on the West End. And she had a great coterie of, of homosexuals who, whenever she performed, they would shout out, they would just scream and shout and, and applaud, and you never got to hear anybody else. You never even got to, they drown out her lines. She was sort of famous for that. But then Paramount came calling in the 1930s, and they signed her to do a, a series of movies out, out in Hollywood, and they didn't go anywhere. They were just, they were pretty bad. They didn't know how to quite work with her. She was too much, she was too much. Urbane, sophisticated. She, for, the, for the, for the, for the films and so she did 10 movies and then she went back to the stage and then she came back in the 1940s and did Lifeboat with, with um, Alfred Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock oh. written by John Steinbeck it's a great great movie yes. if you've never seen it uh, a cruise ship goes down 10 people are on a lifeboat they're saved they, it starts it off it starts with, off it's just her right yeah, like well, her she, fur coat and, she's, the trunk. and she's very upset because she's got a run in her stocking darling and then she's, <laughs> then she's just very upset about that and then her, her diamond bracelet goes over and, and there's like just sort of the thin veneer of society yes. and how they all start off being 
very friendly, but it descends into chaos as, as they yes. run out of food and water, and people they shove people over, and there's a German who's on the boat. And they and eat it, each other, probably. They eat each other, and there's, it, it, and, like, there's sharks. Just and, like Amanda Lepore. Go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She also then, in the 1960s, her only other movie was Die, Die, My Darling, Die! Yes. Where she plays the wicked Mrs. Trefoil. Uh, and uh, Stephanie, co-starring Stephanie Powers. A young Stephanie Powers, yeah. So she only did two good movies. Isn't that, that like a famous play, too? Da, da, no, mommy? That, that's da, die, da. mommy, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, Never that's mind. the Charles Bush one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, and then she was also in Batman. She was the Black Widow in Batman. Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. She was on I Love Lucy. She did a great Lucy she episode. She did a great Lucy episode. But you don't really have a lot of, of to, to hang on to because there's, like I said, there's She's only more from movies. stage. Like Betty Davis did a lot of her state, a lot yeah, of things uh, that she did on stage, Betty Davis did in the movies. Yes, yes all, all that. Um, but this is, a movie was just on Turner Classic Movie called <gasps> Faithless. And it was 1932. It's pre-code. And she plays, you, we, you the code fucked her up, right? Yeah, yeah, she, exactly. Yeah, she's she's too much. She's mm. too much for the screen. But in this, you see, she's a spoiled brat, and she's with Robert C- um, Cummings. Or who's the one who's Marcus Welby? Uh, go ahead, keep going. Yeah. Anyway, Robert um, Young. Robert. Yeah. Uh, maybe was it Robert? Yeah. Anyway, um, so she she plays this rich spoiled brat, and then she loses everything in the depression, and she becomes a streetwalker. She becomes a prostitute. So it's, she goes from one extreme to the other, and it's done very well. And there's a great scene in it where um, her her husband is sick and dying, and so she has to go out and become a prostitute to, to get get the money to for medicine. And she's about to go out to, to her first time, and her landlady stops her and says, "Where are you going?" And she says, "I'm going to the drugstore, darling." And the landlady knows what she's going to do. And she says, darling, you look a little pale. We need some more lipstick and you need some lip root. And she sort of tarts her up a little bit because she's a lady. And so the, the landlady, without and saying it, you know, that yes. I understand what's happening, but we're going to have to, I'm going to have to. And so she gets her tarted up and she goes out on the street and she just starts picking up men on the street. And it's really good. And you really get, I have chills because you, for the first time, you actually see the beauty the, the beauty of the and, and, and the, and her, in the in her So youth. that's Faithless, right? Faithless. And that's on Cholula Turner Bank Classic Ed. Movies. Oh, okay. Our Turner Classic Movie app, you can you can watch oh, it on right. that. Or um, it's very good. I want to leave right now and watch it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, and number two. Number two. I sort of feel I've regaled you enough about uh, China and Singapore <laughs> and <laughs> Hong <not> Kong. <laughs> but I will just tell you one thing. If you do go, you have to go to Changi Airport, which is Singapore Airport. They have built the most amazing terminal and it's like a giant freaking waterfall. I think it's like the tallest waterfall, artificial waterfall in the world. And it's a sort of biodome because in Singapore they're very keen on making everything green now. And you can literally go up inside it and there's a, 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 a train taking you from one terminal to another goes right through this waterfall. Wow. It is the most amazing I did see on yeah. your was it your Instagram or, or was it Billy or no one's or something? Yeah. one of them the, the, you have a bunch of pictures from the airport and it looks yeah. absolutely fantastic I mean it really is we went several hours early and stored our baggage and and then they also have at the top of this dome <coughs> this isn't good if you have vertigo they have nets that you can walk on and you see right down below like sort of it, it's because it's five stories up in the air and five stories down and you're literally up against the roof, walking on rope netting, ah! looking straight down. It, it was just. It was, is it, it was misty? Amazing. Is it like? Is it like good yes. for your skin? Kind oh, of well, they, they had <laughs> they had these things called foggy balls, which are <laughs> concave. Back, back to our trivia question. <laughs> concave balls, and you jump in it. <laughs> a sort of white mist is secreted. It looks basically like you just farted, and you're just sort of sitting there. It's, uh, I didn't quite understand the foggy balls, but it's. Um, Really, it's really quite extraordinary. Did anyone else see the foggy balls, Fenton? <laughs> we have pictures or of just the foggy you? Balls. Is it just you, um, Fenton? So I, I think that's all I'm really going to say. You gotta, you just got to go to Singapore, you got to go to Hong Kong, and you got to go to Bangkok. That, I love it. We'll be right back after the break with the number one, the number one thing that made us go wow, wow. this week. Oh, I thought we were supposed to go wow. Cool. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Hey, and we're back. What is the number one thing that made us go wow this week? I don't know. What was it? Number one. I can't believe we have not talked about this yet. And if we have, don't don't bust my, my thing. But um, porn industry is revolutionizing once again. And porn was responsible for the VCR, right? right. The porn is, it has done so many things. And now it's, it's been the, the killer application of many new in, in innovations. Yes. Well, I mean, and isn't like 90% or 98% of everything online, isn't it all porn, don't they say? 
I hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just for fans or for or, or only, only fans, fans, yeah, is this revolution about where porn stars are now producing their own material, which has been for a while, but it's free of studio, and some are making hundreds of thousands of dollars. See, that's the interesting thing because. But porn has always been at the forefront of media and technologies, yes. right? It's always been the early Chatterate. thing. Chatterate. And then the internet comes along and it basically destroyed the porn industry because suddenly you could get all this porn for free yeah. on the internet. And now porn, porn is, is back. Taking it it's, back. Well, it's right. It, it's, a, it's a disruptor. Well, you and know, it's funny because like Pornhub and Xtube is um, it really sort of de de decimated the porn industry because it was about um, uh, amateur porn. It, was, right. it wasn't it was the slick studio produced porn. Right. It was real people having real sex. But ex and that's sort of what this is too. Explain. But there still were, yeah. there still were studio, there still are studios and they still do kind of push the hottest new guys. Right. But now these hot new guys with their... They've uh, realized. Yes, or, or, or you can be an Instagram model, whatever, and decide I'm going to share my life with you to different degrees. A lot of it is very, you know, full on sex, and some people are more. But it's about if they pay from I don't know, like nine ninety nine a month, and 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 I. I, f I have signed up for a couple because I think like well porn well, is Chris free. Crocker is someone who who does it and who has ends up has ended up making millions off of it seriously because he's doing so well I mean well, it's, it's crazy here's the thing right I mean this morning I signed up for both I signed up for both <laughs> things because I thought I should do some research if it's going to be on the show <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm no, ahead of you on the research because there, here's the thing no because here's the thing I you would see people saying on Instagram swipe up to get OnlyFans yeah, and yeah. I think I'm not gonna pay right. you know like Dare I can you. get my porn for free. And then I, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. But it's you pay per person, right? Yes. So it's like 10.99 or more a month per person. So you could really rack up you some. Can, but there are people who are who are now um, OnlyFans stars, and we are doing a World of Wonder series with right. those For people. Wow presents plus. Wow presents plus. Um, Matthew Camp is somebody who is uh, just a huge, huge star, yep. just on his own anyway. He's a perfume mogul. He was the next go-go boy. Yeah. And now he's doing these OnlyFans, and he's doing so well for himself. Um, That's what I love about OnlyFans and my, my, my whatever is like it doesn't have to be a porn star. It can be the hot boy and, you know, that you see at the bar. There are people here at World of Wonder who have them. I don't that we don't that I'm not allowed to mention. Oh, um, I'll uh, see you after the show. <laughs> but is it? I want to be it, shot from above. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's a different. It's a fundamentally different relationship, isn't it? Because porn is well, is produced and made, and you're consuming it. But this is more of an intimate. Uh, it's more of personal like a, a relationship, really right? Here, the thing is, with porn, and if you're a studio person, you get like a thousand dollars to do a scene or whatever, right. it, a thousand, five thousand. But that's it. You get and it, then and you make personal it. appearances and, and stuff. They make, they make personal appearances. No residuals. No resi There are no residuals. Right. Whereas with, if you have an OnlyFans, the sky is the limit, yeah. and you can, you, you know, you, you can just walk away with. And, and I imagine the pressure is you have to content, content, con you do the blog, you don't do porn, but like you have to constantly fill content. And I do. There's a, a couple. I won't the name, but they but like and there's so many angles so they have like cameras in the walls then you have to like videotape the guy blowing you but like people i think are we're gonna like evolve into creatures that have like an extra arm for the camera <laughs> to capture all of the thing i mean they're really well produced and edited they are well produced um uh them. what was i gonna say um uh well this I, one guy the only with proper, and this is my own addiction-y kind of thing. It's like, the thing about online porn, which I always make the joke that, that, that my computer pops up and says, you've seen every video online, <laughs> move on. But uh, there's something, you, you, you sign up for a month or a long time, but after a month, you're kind of like, you've been through all of their so videos, you, and you're like, well, fine. I pretty much know you guys, so like, who's new? But, but there, it is also true that- So it's I, all about the churn. <laughs> ah! right? But you only you can go as far as you want to on it. There are people who do, who have OnlyFans who you, all you ever see is their butt. Or yeah, all, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you don't have to do no. hardcore which sex, is a, uh, <laughs> which is great, right? Because it's or not about sort of a, a sort of rigid th there's industry a, there's a standards. Slow reveal where for a month right. you only see the butt, and then right. you start to see a little bit more, and then mm. you bring in another person, and that way you keep the person who's watching you. Uh -huh. addicted, I also think it's great because it's like it's not about the typical. Uh, this sort of idea of a, a limited idea of what makes someone sexy, whether you're a woman, exactly. have blonde hair and big tits, or whether you're a guy, yeah. there are all sorts of guys who, and who aren't not, typical porn yeah, stars. Aren't typical yeah. porn mm -hmm. stars. There's and, a lid for every pot. <laughs> oh, that's so poetically put. Okay. Um, well, that's all we got time for this week. My God, it went so quickly. Blue by. <laughs> See, by. this is what happens when we're all together. I love having us um, all together. Never, never nice leave me back. again. <laughs> Um, okay, there we go. <laughs> That's it. 
Thanks for tuning into the Wow Report. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Nice to see you again. Same time, same place next week. Let's do it. Yeah, do it. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. wow.